Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hunter and in this video I'm going to be going over the different ways that you can make money investing in land and if you watch till the end there's one way that not a lot of people talk about so make sure you watch the entire video. The first way and most simplest way is just to simply flip the land and that's what I do and the reason that I do that is one is the easiest two there's not a lot of competition and three you can make the most money so why not do it so basically what you are doing when you're flipping land is the same thing as like flipping a house you're buying it for less money and then you're going and selling it for more and you might make some improvements to it uh, but basically it's just going to be the arbitrage of that property so when i go and buy a piece of land there's a lot of different things that you can look for and a lot of different ways that you can do it uh, so you can buy an infill lot which is in the city or you can go and buy a property that's rural, that's out in the countryside, and there's tons of different ways that you can make money, but I prefer to do the rural ones, and there's a lot of different reasons behind that. Uh, for example, if you're gonna buy the infill lot, it's gonna be one where maybe there's a house here, there's a house right next to it, and in the middle, there's an empty lot. So that lot already has all the utilities and everything that you'd need to build a house. So you'd go and buy that lot, and you'd sell it to somebody who's gonna go build a house. And the reason they like that is because it's already pretty much ready to go. All they have to do is just build a house on top of that lot that has those utilities available. Whereas when the properties I'm buying, they're rural, they're out in the countryside. So that means there's less people who are gonna go build like that because there's a lot of steps you have to go through to actually build on it. You have to get the electricity out there. You have to either drill a well or have the water uh, extended out there or the city uh, sewage, or if you're gonna put a septic system in, there's a lot of different extra steps that you have to go through that. But the reason that I like it is because one, that creates less competition. There's less people that are out there. But two, that usually means the zoning is more favorable. So you can do a lot more things with that property. So if you want to build on it, you could do that. If you want to camp on it, if you want to put a mobile home, if you want to put a tiny house, if you want to do short-term rental, usually when you're out in the countryside, there's a lot more things that you can do with that property. And that's why I prefer that compared to the infill city lots. Uh, but again, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You could also do commercial lots. There's Tons of different type of vacant land, but like I said, my favorite is to do rural land. So when I go and buy one of these rural lots, there's a few things that I can do to it. I can go and put a driveway into it. I can clear it out and get it ready to build. But the cool thing is there's not much that you usually have to do to it. You can pretty much go and wholesale that property. The only difference is usually I end up buying the property first because it's one, you can't get financing on land. And two, it just makes the whole process a lot easier and you're gonna keep more of your margins compared to if you're going to wholesale that property. So basically, like I said, you're gonna go, I buy that property and then I get it listed for sale. Uh, when you go and list it for sale, there's a lot of places that you can list it. Uh, you can go on Facebook Marketplace, you can go on Craigslist, and those ways work great, especially when you're selling properties on a contract for deed, uh, which is also known as like owner financing or a land contract. But if you want to, you can also go and sell it on the MLS. The only downside is you have to usually pay realtor fees or some sort of listing fee to get it on the MLS, but you don't usually have to do that. You can just stay to Facebook. So for example, one deal that, that I'll usually do is I'll go and find a parcel that's very small, so I can get it for a cheap price, so I can pay anywhere from a couple hundred bucks up to a few thousand dollars, and then I'll go and sell that property anywhere from five, three to five times what I paid for it. So if I went and bought a property for $4,000, I could sell that one for fifteen dollars to $30,000. And the reason that I like that price point is most people can afford that, especially if it's on a contract for deed. With the contract for deed, they're making payments to you, so that could be anywhere from your couple thousand dollars down, and then they're paying you $500 a month until that's paid off, which to most people is basically like a car payment. So most people can afford that. So that's why I like that price point, um, and you're gonna make the most deals that way. You can also go and do high, bigger parcels with uh, higher numbers on it. Um, it just requires you to have more funding and for you to sell it to a different type of clientele. And usually it requires the MLS as well, just because there's more people there that have more money available. Another popular way that you can make money in land is through subdivision. With subdivision, basically you're buying a large piece of land and you're dividing it into smaller parcels, which people are gonna buy individually. The great thing about that is when you're buying a huge parcel, you're getting the actual uh, individual parcel sizes are gonna kind of be discounted because you're gonna buy that entire thing and then you're gonna cut it up into small pieces and sell those. So how you do that is kind of a long process and that's one reason that I'm not the hugest fan of it, especially when you're getting started but there are pros to buying and subdividing land for example if you have a little bit more money or if you have some sort of fund or you're JVing with somebody you have a lot of funds available you can buy that larger piece of land 
and the process then of selling those parcels are gonna be a lot easier because they're all gonna be in the same area. So if you go through the actual process of subdividing that property, let's say you buy a 40 acre parcel and you subdivide it into half acre lots, that would be 80 parcels, but there are, you have to put in roads and common areas. So let's say you get 60 parcels out of that 40 acre parcel and you're able to sell those parcels for in my market, for example, you could buy that 40 acres for $100,000. You could subdivide those and sell those off for fifteen dollars to $30,000. So you could make anywhere from a million to $2 million off the sales. But the downside is even though you're able to buy that parcel for $100,000, the actual process will take year, a year or if not years and the actual budget is gonna cost a lot because of the actual subdivision process. It's very expensive to get those lines and the, the actual property lines put in um, on those individual parcels. So the actual process is very expensive and that could cost you half a million dollars just for that. So there are still a lot of opportunities to triple your money within subdivision. It's just, it can take a lot of capital up front and a long time, which is why when you're getting started, it's not my suggested route to go through. I'd say to stick to flipping. The final way that I'm going to talk about today is zoning requests and variance request changes. So with that, you're going to be going to the county and requesting the change the zoning for that specific piece of land. So let's say that you bought a parcel that you're only able to camp on or you're only able to uh, keep your mobile home on it for a certain amount of the year. Or maybe let's say it's setbacks aren't allowed and allowing you to build because it's too small or it's too close to the road. So you can go to the county and make a request to say that you should be able to do that certain thing with that property because it's close enough or it's not gonna have any hindrance to whatever the reason is that that zoning is in place. So if you're able to go through that process, you're able to add a lot of value into that. Let's say one property, you don't have the setbacks. You go and get those variance changes requested and they're approved. You can go and build on that property. It goes from a useless piece of property or a piece of property you can only camp on to something that somebody can actually build their house on. So doing that, you're adding a lot of value to that property and you're able to go and sell it for a lot more money. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I also have my course for free in the description, so click that link and go and check out my Instagram because I'll have a lot more videos on there for you to learn more about land investing.